Alright, thanks for watching and today we'll define the single most important concept in topology and analysis, the concept of compactness. Now, this one has to do with open covers, so let me define those first. So suppose you have a set E, then an open cover is just a collection of patches or open sets that cover the whole set E. What does covering mean? It just means that E is in the union of all the patches. And now let us make that more precise. So a patch will be denoted by capital U and the collection or the family of all the patches will be written beautiful U, so script U. Just a family of all those patches. And again, what does an open cover mean? So definition, beautiful U, so if, if, one, if beautiful U is a family of open subsets, U, then beautiful U is an open cover of E if Again, E is included in the union of all those patches. So it's included in the union of U in of U where U is in beautiful U. I know, super confusing notation, but here we mean the union of all those patches U that are in your family. More precisely, what does that mean? It means that if we take any x in your set E, then x must be in some patch U. So for instance, think of beautiful U as a university and U being classes, then the university is an open cover for all, that, all the students if every student is in at least one class. And really you should think of the open sets as being patches or um, um, band-aids like band or even um, deck of cards or bed sheets, like anything that covers a certain set. All right, so here's an example of an open cover. So let E be the real line. And let me first give you examples and then I will describe what the open covers are. So, for instance, of course this is all infinite, but let's say we start with minus 3 comma minus 1. And then we'll do, let's say, the midpoint, so minus 2 comma 0. And then the set, let's say, minus 1 comma 1. And then how about 0 comma 2? and then one comma three, and continuing and so on and so forth in both sides, then you can see that really all those sub, all those open intervals, they really cover the whole real line. And so in particular, if you consider beautiful U to be the interval, uh, the set of intervals of the form M minus one, m plus 1, where m is an integer. So in other words, the intervals, let's see, with m is minus 2, that gives you minus 3 comma minus 1, and then minus 2 comma 0, and then minus 1 comma 1, and then 0 comma 2, 1 comma 3, dot, dot, dot. Then this is a collection of open subsets whose union includes E, therefore it is an open cover for E. So that's one example, but there are other examples as well. If you, let's say in R2, R2, if you just consider all the balls with 
integer centers, so things like the integer lattice, kind of like this, the balls with integer centers and radius one. All those things, well, they must eventually cover the whole real, the, all of R2. So you see, it's literally a bunch of balls that covers the real line. Not the real line, but the plane. See, so here's another example of a very freaky open cover. So let beautiful U be just a set of balls at center the integers, so M, N, and radius one where M and N are in Z. This is also an open cover. Now, sometimes given a cover, it might be very redundant and there might be an efficient, what's called sub cover. So let me define the concept of sub cover first. So definition, so we say V, or let's write it like new like that, is a, a sub cover of U. If uh, V is a subset or a subfamily of U that also covers E. Now, here's the idea because sometimes uh, covers can be have a lot of element and in fact a lot of redundant elements so consider for instance the following sub the following cover you just a lot of balls that cover your space so really kind of overkill then a sub cover is just a subset so a smaller set of this but that covers the same space, kind of that has the same span in some sense. So, and for instance, and this is a horrible picture, but let me give you an example of um, a sub cover. So, uh, for instance, consider the interval 0, comma 1. So just the interval 0, comma 1. And consider the following a cover. So basically, I believe the interval minus 1, uh, comma, uh, no, let's see, um, uh, 0, comma 2. Zero comma two, and then minus one comma one. And then one comma three. Then at this thing, okay, the whole collection well covers your interval zero comma one. Then if you take u to be the intervals minus one comma one, zero comma two, one comma three. Well, that covers E, but notice we don't even need this last set. We can just throw it away and still get that this subfamily covers um, your set. So if you just take the first two, then you get what's called a subcover. Then if you take V to be minus one comma one, and 0 comma 2, well, it still covers E, so it's a subcover. So think of it as a you know, subspace or a subset of a cover. Okay, and we're almost there at the definition of compactness. Uh, there's just one little thing. What is a finite subcover? Well, it's just one with finitely many elements. So definition uh, V is a finite subcover if V 
uh, has um, has finally many elements. So for instance, this set has only two elements. So in fact, in this case, V has finitely many elements. Uh, infinite subcover would be one where you have infinitely many intervals. All right, and now without further ado, we're finally ready for the definition of compactness. So let me first of all describe what it is. So um, compact, compact sets are very efficient. In other words, no matter how crazy of a cover I give you, no matter how many what a cover I give you might have infinitely many elements, you, there is always a subcover, so a subset of a cover which only has finitely many elements. In other words, for a compact set, you never need infinitely many covers. It, finite covers are always enough. So in that sense, it's efficient. So definition, E is compact if every open cover U of E has a finite subcover. In other words, again, no matter how crazy or how infinite the cover U is, you can always extract a finitely many elements of U that still does the job. So in some sense, you would never pay uh, money to, for an infinite cover of a compact set because you can always do the same thing, but with finitely many um, patches. Okay, now the question is, which sets are compact? Well, this is actually really hard to answer because uh, you really have to show that any cover must have a finite subcover. And there are really a lot of them to consider. But in the, uh, in the next two videos, I will actually give you a very elegant criterion, uh, criterion for compactness. And in fact, we'll see that the interval A comma B is compact. And also uh, in RD or RK, closed balls are compact as well. BXR for any X and R is compact. But also, we'll see that boxes are compact as well. Stuff like 1, 2 times 3, 4. So the square with sides 1, 2, and 3, 4 is also compact. But again, this we will prove in the next couple of videos. And um, however, if you want, just stick around and I can give you examples of non-compact sets. So you can see why. Uh, why compactness is so important. All right, for instance, here's an example of a non-compact set. So non-example one. Okay, so I'm claiming that R, so E is R, is not compact. Okay. And here's why, so what do we have to do? We have to find an open cover that has no finite subcover. And in fact, let's consider the following. Let U be the following cover. So again, this is the real line. And let's consider the following. So we start with the interval minus one comma one, and then we'll do the interval minus two comma two. Minus two comma two, and then the interval minus three comma three, Etc. Etc. So u is just a set of all intervals of the form minus n comma n, where n is a natural number. Okay. Then, well, this actually covers all of R because those are just balls with eventually infinite radius. Okay. 
However, so it's a cover of R. My favorite cover band, right? And uh, on the other hand, I'm claiming that U has no finite subcover because suppose V, which has only finitely many elements, so let's say minus n1, n1, up to minus nk, nk, is a finite subcover. Now, what did I want to say? So again, those are not necessarily nested. So let's say nk could be smaller than n1, but it doesn't matter. Just take the bigger one of all those numbers. So let capital N be the maximum of n1 up to nk. And by the way, here's where we need the fact that we have finitely many numbers, because then we can just take the maximum. All right, then, well, we have all those intervals. Okay. Let's say minus n1, n1, and then maybe minus nk, nk. But here's the thing, all those intervals, they're included in minus capital N, comma capital N. So in fact, if you take the union of all those intervals, you just get the interval minus capital N comma capital N. Then, the union of all the elements in V, so the union of V is just the interval minus capital N comma capital N. But, Remember, V is a cover, so in fact, the real numbers are included in that union. So since V is a cover of R, what we get is that R is included in the union, in minus capital N, comma, capital N. But then that's a problem. We cannot fit the whole real line in this interval because, for instance, capital N plus 1 is a real number, but not in that interval. But this makes no sense. Because uh, capital N plus 1 is in R, but not in, in minus capital N, comma, capital N. And this is a contradiction, and we usually put those two arrows, but uh, let me put a thunder, if you know what I mean. Uh, it's an inside joke. Um, and therefore, that's a contradiction. A contradiction with what? A contradiction with the fact that there's a finite subcover. So, in other words, this cover U does not have a finite subcover, so the real numbers are not compact. Okay, here's another example. Consider the following. Let E be the open interval 0, 1. And consider the following cover. So I guess you start with the empty set, so just one, one, but then you do one half, comma one, and then one third, comma one, etc., etc., until one over n, comma one. So let capital U be the set of all intervals of the form one over n, comma one where uh, n is a natural number, okay. then you can also check that u covers, e, uh, u covers the interval e. Because if you take the union of all that, it turns out it's the interval 0, 1. So that covers 0, 1. But I'm claiming that um, there is no finite subcover. And the idea is, well, if there are just finitely many sets, then if you take the union, it has to stop somewhere, but then there's even a smaller number that is not in that union. So that's the main gist of it, but let me prove this. So suppose that 
V, uh, which is, if you want, uh, 1 over n1, comma 1, da, 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 up to 1 over nk, comma 1, is a finite subcover. Uh, so, uh, uh, yeah, is a finite subcover. Then, just as before, let capital M be the maximum of the n1 up to nk. So let capital M be the maximum of n1 up to nk. Again, which is uh, finite. Okay. Then, just as before, all those intervals are inside the interval 1 over capital M, comma 1. So in particular, the union, so if you want, this is 1 over capital N, comma 1. And in particular, the union of all those, which again might look like this, is in that interval 1 over capital N, comma 1. Then the union of V is the interval 1 over capital N, comma 1. But if... Uh, v were a finite subcarver, this would imply that the interval 0, 1 is a subset of that interval 1 over capital N, 1. But then that's a contradiction because, well, not every element in 0, 1 is in that interval 1 over capital N, 1. Because, for instance, take 1 over capital N plus 1. Well, it's a number that's in that 0, 1, but not in that union, in some sense. But, but then, 1 over capital N plus 1, it's in 0, 1 but not in 1 over capital N plus comma 1. And again, and that's a contradiction, so this time with the two swords on gal. All right, thank you very much.